Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. I'm using the Lincoln Power MIG 210MP again today and I'm doing a little lift arc TIG, a little stick and a little MIG. MP stands for multi-process so don't be fooled by the Power MIG. It does lift arc TIG, stick and MIG. This is the bend test fixture that I'm working on. It just goes with a 20 ton Harbor Freight press. Very simple down and dirty bend test fixture for bending test straps out of plate and pipe and it is using dimensions right out of American Welding Society D1.1 structural welding code. Now there are different dimensions for different codes but this is this is pretty close. I'm not going to be using it to officially certify anyone. I just want to be able to do some demonstrations on videos. Once I weld a test plate I want to be able to show that it is actually good so I'll bend it and the dimensions are will be very close here I'm using an inch and a half round stock this is stainless not sure what grade is stainless again it was in the scrap pile now generally bend test fixtures will be made out of hardened uh, steel the rollers will be made out of hardened steel these aren't rollers they're just you know the right radius and I'll grease them up a little bit if I have any trouble and I'm not going to bend hundreds or thousands of straps but it'll last me a pretty good long while so let's let's do a little TIG welding here. 175 amps is max on this little machine when you're TIG welding on DC. I'll get a couple of tacks on this on this piece here. The inch and a half gives the right the right radius and the right diameter for the mandrel, the male part, and uh, inch and a half is also the right minimum radius for the female part. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm I'm, I'm I've got plans for doing several plate tests and pipe tests and I want to actually be able to do some bend testing when I'm done just to show that what looked like a good weld is a good weld or isn't a good weld it's just a good learning tool even if it's not official uh, an official fixture it's still a, a good learning tool for feedback I am using a foot pedal here I talked a little bit about the foot pedal in part one of this uh, using the, the Lincoln 210 it's lift arc TIG, so you have to touch off to get the arc started, but it touches off at really low amperage, and so you know the, it makes the tip of the electrode last a little bit longer than a straight up scratch start rig. But really, not much difference in lift arc and scratch start, in my, in my opinion. And what I mean by that is I don't see a huge benefit in lift arc versus just straight up scratch start. That's two passes on there. It takes a lot of well to fill in these little uh, gaps because I don't have the, the uh, round stock coped or anything, but that's okay. It's just like a bevel, you know, it's getting plenty of weld in there. What I'm doing here is I'm just putting a little bump on on the piece because I, I want the thing to engage in the in the uh, carbon steel tubing there one inch. And that's just a really quick, easy way to, to make a stop. So we'll get four tacks on this thing and square it up, make sure it's not too bad off, pretty close. And then we'll get, again, four tacks on it and then we'll weld it out. Now, I kind of planned on welding this thing out with TIG, but then I thought, well, this is a TIG stick MIG machine, so we'll just do one pass with TIG here, show that, and then we'll swap over to stick welding and check into the, the different features that the machine has on that. So here we go on stick. I'm going to be using ER309-16 Excalibur rods from Lincoln in the 1 8 that's 3.2 millimeter diameter. So this is what the interface looks like. And by the way, this is a slick interface on this little machine. I select stick and it gives me a, a reminder to check my polarity. Then it makes me select electrodes, 60 series or 70 series, diameter, and then thickness. Now I don't really particularly think this is necessary for seasoned welders but this is a really good guide if you're trying to teach somebody it's kind of instructional makes you stop and think about all the little details. I'm gonna be using at 100 amps to start with because stainless stick rods just don't handle the heat like a 7018 will. Alright notice it says press for options here if I press the, the, the main selector button it gives me an option for a hot start that means it's going to bump up the amperage for me to keep me from sticking the rod, and that is a good feature to have. Also, another, another feature is it has arc force, also called dig function. Another good feature. 
Now, generally speaking, for a, a 60 series rod like a 6011, you would set it the the uh, to dig high for a 7018 or soft rod like that. You'd set it low. This machine is not rated for 6010, but it will run a 6011. All right, I've got a pair of strong hand pipe pliers right here that I'm going to clamp on this thing, and I'm, I've got a, a spare piece of inch and a half round that I that I've got clamped in a, a drill vise, and uh, I'm just making a little turntable for myself here to get some stick beads around this thing. Of course, this is sped up right here, but it's kind of pretty convenient here to get to get a bunch of weld on this. Now, we'll show you an arc shot here of the next pass. I'm going to wind up putting quite a few beads on this thing. Mainly, it doesn't really need that much weld because it's just kind of a coupler, and the pressure is going to be directly against that inch and a half round stock, but I haven't had a chance to run stainless stick in a long long time so I, I definitely need to practice as you can tell by the way I'm shaking around here but it does have a really really smooth arc for stick with the settings that I used which is three on the the dig function so that's a couple of beads around that thing the Excalibur rods doing a really good job without the turntable aspect you would have to kinda of get out of position and uncomfortable to start with and then you're, and then you become comfortable as you twist your wrist around, and then you kind of get a little bit out of position and uncomfortable again. But you can make it all the way around, whether it's stationary or whether you can spin it. All right, well, let's take a look at MIG welding now with uh, C25 gas, that's 7525 argon CO2 gas. One thing I want to point out here is this little, this little block here. I'm not really sure what it's called, but on the wire feeding mechanism, uh, cast aluminum housing here, it's got these little guide blocks with a little groove in there for the wire. And what they're for is to prevent bird nesting. So basically when you feed the wire through this thing, you feed it through those little grooves and then you clamp this other block on there, chances of any kind of a bird nest are pretty much slim and none because it just got it locked in there. The, the Power MIG 350 MP that I have has this also and also you use a like a nylon one for the aluminum feeding so it's smoother but anyway I find that find that pretty interesting all right let's take a look at the MIG settings and the functions and extra features on that real quick before we light up on MIG hit the home button and the, it takes you back to all your process selectors here and it's got one for MIG steel C25 and then it reminds you to check your polarity and then press continue and then you select your wire diameter. Every time you select something, you press the button and it takes you to the next series in the menu. And then you've got thickness. And again, you can just select one here and then you can adjust manually after that. So I'm selecting 3 16 And that, that throws it into 19 volts and 330 inches a minute. Now that's high on the wire feed speed. That was pretty high. But this does get you in the ballpark. It is, it's, it's, it, it's workable. And like I said, you can you can manually adjust from there volt, both voltage and wire feed speed. So it just kind of like takes a stab at it for you, gets something that'll work if you just want to weld, and then you adjust from there. Now it's got a run-in feature. That's the, you can adjust the the run-in speed of the wire before you light up. So as that wire is running in before it arcs, you can slow it down so you don't get a, a stubbing and you get a better start that way. Also got a spot timer and inductance setting. Now I like to set my inductance usually up fairly high. So I'm going to take a stab at seven here and uh, not not knowing any better. I'm just going to, I just know that on most machines I like it above halfway if there is an inductance setting. But it all depends on the application. So I dropped the wire feed speed to 250 inches a minute and I liked it a lot better than up around 330. Now this is my go-to method here for short circuit MIG on a joint like this, horizontal, flat. Uh, you know, I usually make a little series, it's like a cursive E, and it just puts a little pattern in there. Working on the MIG like TIG game, but I got a long ways to go for them anywhere close to the guys that, that do that, like ZT Fab or you know other guys like that. But the machine certainly capable. It's it's just me that's holding it back. <laughs> And of course, you don't have to do that technique. You can just do a straight drag pull or a push and get very good results 
like that as well. Okay, well, that is all I got for you this week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet. As always, thanks for watching, and check out the featured products on the store at weldmonger.com.